Well, good morning and welcome to worship here at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Long Beach. I invite you to stand as you are able and, can, and we will continue our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated. First reading is from Genesis chapter 29. Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife that I may go into her for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. Laban gave his maid Silpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you, serve with you for Rachel? Then why have you deceived me? Laban said, this is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and I will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? 
They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace be with you from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Pray with me, please. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of all of our hearts, may they be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of my favorite Mark Twain quotes, which many of our, our Bible study participants can testify to, reads this way, history doesn't repeat itself but it often rhymes. Throughout the summer, we've been reading stories from Genesis. If we can remember way back the first Sunday in June, remember way back then? Holy Trinity Sunday, we read one of the stories of creation in Genesis. And since then, we've been reading stories each Sunday, the, the first reading about Abraham, about Isaac and Jacob. We've read about other characters in the story, both named and unnamed. We learned about some of the women, right? Sarah and Hagar, Rebecca, and today we are introduced to Leah and Rachel. Over the course of the, our summer reading, we've read about sibling rivalries between Ishmael and Isaac, Esau and Jacob, and a little foreshadowing, there will be a few more sibling rivalry, rivalries because we have, of course, I'm probably familiar with the 12 tribes of Israel, 12 boys and one girl named Dinah, right? And the women also get caught up in their son's rivalries as well as their own. I'm looking at Leah and Rachel for today. But over the course of our summer reading, we also got to know some unnamed servants, and maybe we've been touched by an angel or two. But as we've been doing uh, these Genesis readings, one of the ongoing themes throughout all of these stories is that Abraham and his family are pretty messed up, right? They're quite a dysfunctional, improbable, and unlikely family for God to have chosen and blessed. Yet the scriptures tell us that Abraham and his descendants were chosen to show the nations who God is and what God is like. As we've read over the past few weeks, patterns of dysfunction have emerged, and they seem to repeat themselves. Well, they don't act exactly repeat, but let's just say they often rhyme. This morning, we have a somewhat humorous humility tale involving Jacob, grandson of Abraham and one of the rivaling twin sons of Isaac, and if we remember from previous readings, Jacob was a supplanter or deceiver who latched onto his slightly older twin's foot as they were being born. Jacob later conned his brother out of his birthright and stole the blessing from his father Isaac. And in our first reading for today, Jacob has the tables turned on him. Now, the story may sound a bit familiar with its own little rhyming pattern, and see if you've heard this one before. A young man, or maybe not so young, leaves Canaan to go find a wife in the country of his kindred, the Arameans. Even some of the characters are the same, such as Laban, Abraham's nephew, Isaac's cousin, and Jacob's uncle. Now, Jacob's marriage story is a little different from his father Isaac's in that Isaac isn't the one that travels to his home country to find a wife. Remember that story, Abraham sends an unnamed servant to go and do the work and bring back Rebekah. This time, however, Jacob is sent on his own to find his own bride amongst his kindred back in the old country. And our reading for today begins with Laban, Jacob's favorite uncle and future father-in-law, saying, quote, because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? 
The scripture goes on to inform us that Laban has two daughters. The name of the elder is Leah, and the name of the younger, Rachel. We also get a description of the daughters. Leah's eyes were lovely, whatever that means, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. And of course, Jacob loved Rachel, the younger one, over the older one. And we might be able to see a sibling rivalry beginning to brew here, right? So Jacob tried to work out a deal with Laban, and he said, quote, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. He probably should have gotten this in writing, right? And Laban responded to his petition, It is better that I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love that he had for her. Arranged and negotiated marriages. How romantic, right? And so much for the women and what they have to say in our scriptures as well. But Jacob worked for his favorite uncle and future father-in-law, Laban, for seven years before he was allowed to marry her. And after seven years, Jacob went to Laban and demanded, Give me my wife, for my time is completed. So what did Laban do? He gathered everyone together, held a huge feast, and after the feast, he gave his daughter to Jacob. The problem is that Laban gave Jacob the older daughter, Leah, instead of Rachel, the younger one. And notice that it isn't until the next day that Jacob realizes that he married the wrong daughter. It sounds like there might be a separate biblical account in which this wedding took place in Las Vegas, and the wedding officiant was Elvis. We've heard that story before, right? Anyway, Jacob was outraged that he was tricked by his father-in-law, who by now has become his least favorite uncle. And the scripture tells us how Jacob said to Laban, "'What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel?' Why then have you deceived me? As though Jacob never deceived anyone in the scriptures, right? But Laban responded, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. A little touche here. And he tells them to complete the week of this one, and I will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Again, here in our text, the women don't have much of a say and their consent wasn't necessary in the society. After a week and a lesson learned, Jacob was able to marry Rachel, but he also had to work for his father-in-law or his uncle for another seven years. Talk about awkward. Imagine living under those household dynamics. Jacob living with his two wives who had their maids and servants to care for them while he had to deal with his father-in-law, who's also his uncle. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the small town that I grew up in. But I digress. What follows in the next few chapters is a sibling rivalry between the sisters who really desire to be loved and who long for children to receive God's blessing and maybe a little bit of the inheritance. The rest of the story doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. See, God saw Leah was unloved by Jacob, and God blessed her with children from from Jacob. Meanwhile, Rachel went barren, and like Sarah before her, Rachel gave Jacob her maid Bilhah to bear sons for him, which she did. And when Leah ceased bearing children, she too gave up her maid Zilpah to marry Jacob, and she bore him sons as well. And there's also stories involving food in order to deceive Jacob and for Leah to bear more children in her older age. And in the end, Leah had six boys, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, and one girl, Dinah. Meanwhile, her maid Zilpah had two boys, Gad and Asher, and Rachel's maid Bilpah had two boys, Dan and Naphtali. And the scripture then tells us, quote, Then God remembered Rachel. God saw Rachel and remembered Rachel. And God heeded her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son 
and said, God has taken away my reproach, and she named him Joseph. Yeah, that Joseph, with his amazing technicolor dream coat, right? And she said, may the Lord add to me another son. And it's another number of years and a number of chapters later that Rachel would conceive another son, Benjamin. But unfortunately, she would die in childbirth. As we read these stories and these accounts in Genesis, we read about an extremely dysfunctional family, and we might find ourselves wondering, why would God choose this family? They're a mess, aren't they? They do all kinds of backstabbing and deception against one another, brother against brother, sister against sister, mother against sons, etc., right? Jesus may have had something to say about that in the Gospels, too. But they do all kinds of bad things, right? Why them? What's so special about Abraham or Isaac or Jacob or anyone else that came before or after them? But I think these stories serve as a reminder it's not just who they are or who we are or where we come from or some of the things that we're capable of, some good, but also plenty of bad. These stories are a reminder of who God is, and that God has a greater purpose for our world and for the nations. See, God's desire is to bring us, to bring humanity, to bring the nations together for the peace and prosperity of all. The story of Abraham and his descendants is the beginning of the story about how God promises to bring the nations together for good and to be the nations who come together to follow the way of God. And God chose an imperfect, wandering Aramean and his descendants with all their issues and drama to show us and to reveal to us the nature of God. God is the one who sees us who hears us, and who is moved with compassion and love and forgiveness. And God acts and intervenes for a greater purpose and for the greater good to bring the nations together. And oftentimes, God starts small and with those who are little and seemingly insignificant, often with some issues or challenges. And God chooses to intervene in highly unlikely and even improbable situations to do the impossible. In our gospel, Jesus tells parables about how the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed or yeast. The kingdom of heaven starts small and seemingly insignificant, but there is still so much potential for goodness and peace and prosperity, not just for some, but for all. But Jesus also warns against those who try to hoard the treasures and the bounty of God's heavenly kingdom. We need to remember that even Jesus was a descendant of Abraham through Isaac and Jacob and Judah all the way to the time of his birth as the son of Mary, the wife of Joseph, who is the one descended from that long genealogy we read in Matthew's gospel, filled with people with all kinds of issues, right? But it's a reminder that God continues to see, God hears, God is moved with compassion. For we're reminded in our Old Testament lesson that God saw Leah was unloved and blessed her with a child. God saw Rachel in need and blessed her with Joseph. God saw a people who walked in the shadows of death and despair. God saw Mary and Joseph and nations in need. And God acted through Jesus to show us God's way of compassion, of love, and forgiveness. These are the stories that we find in the literature and faith of ancient Israel. These stories in Genesis are still our stories today. We live, we struggle, we fight with our siblings, i.e. other nations or tribes, and the divine parent intervenes to save us, to scold us sometimes, and to show us back home to the way of God and to the way of love and to a way of forgiveness. This story doesn't necessarily repeat itself, but it often rhymes. My siblings in Christ, 
as believers in the way of Jesus. Let us not give up hope. Let us recognize some of the rhyming patterns of our collective history. Let us confront some of the sins of our fathers and our mothers. And let us confront it with God's way of truth, of love, of grace, and forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and of all creation. Almighty God, we pray for the church and all servants of the gospel. Equip rostered, rostered and lay ministers to proclaim that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Form confirmands and catechumens into disciples. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. Gracious God, we pray for the well-being of creation. Safeguard the environment, clean polluted rivers, and lakes, local waterways may be named. Okay. Um, preserve the mighty trees and the tiny mustard seed and send advocates for sustainable practices. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Compassionate God, we pray for the nations. Instill in all who govern the ability to discern between good and evil. Free those who are oppressed and protect those facing danger. Promote peace across the world and in our towns and neighborhoods. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. Merciful God, we pray for all in any need. Protect those fleeing from war. Shelter any who are in poverty. Clothe the naked. Soothe all who grieve. And heal the sick, especially Marion, Felicia, Reuben, Becky, Natasha, Angie, and Linda. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, we pray for this congregation, both those gathered today 
and those absent from our assembly. Grant safety to travelers and refreshments and safety for children attending summer camps or community programs. Give direction to any experiencing life transitions. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal, oh, e holy God, we pray for this congregation, both those gathered today and those absent from assembly, grant safety for travelers and refreshments and safety for children attending summer camps or community programs. Give direction to any experiencing life transitions. Eternal God, we give thanks for your saints who now rest from their labors. Inspire us by their witness to treasure the gospel and continually nourish us with your grace. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with your neighbor. I think my God on every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you. more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that ye may approve things that are excellent that ye may be sincere being filled with the fruits of righteousness unto the glory and praise of God A 
field and forest, sea and sky. You are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness to us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good.
please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And the congregation may be seated for this week's announcements. Uh, please join us for fellowship uh, in the fellowship hall uh, following worship today. Uh, and speaking of fellowship, in a couple of weeks, uh, Sunday, August 13th, we will be having a potluck. And I do have a sign-up sheet for those who would like to sign up to bring something to the potluck. Yay! So um, please sign up. Uh, it'll be awesome. Uh, there will be ice cream. You don't have to worry about bringing ice cream. We are going to have ice cream. We'll supply the ice cream. If you want to bring some other stuff, that'd be great too. Uh, but join us for the potluck. Invite friends, neighbors, uh, all the good stuff. Uh, but that is uh, Sunday, August 13th, uh, which will also be a, a pretty important day because we'll be doing blessing of school supplies and backpacks. Uh, and that is our ongoing um, kind of summer campaign. We're taking donations for the child organization in Long Beach that's providing backpacks and school supplies for children in need uh, as they get ready to go back to school. And that's coming up soon. Uh, it's kind of like mom and dad can hardly wait. No, that's Christmas, right? But still waiting for summer vacation to end. Um, and it should be a lot of fun. So please uh, continue to, to bring those uh, supplies and donations of school supplies uh, for the child. And we'll do blessing of the backpacks and uh, a special potluck uh, that uh, Sunday as well. Rummage sale will be coming up. Uh, that'll be the first week in October. Uh, and I think we have some details that are, are rolling out for that as well. Um, and then I think last announcement, oh no, there's another announcement. I know we have lots of uh, baseball fans here, right? There's a Lutheran night at Dodger Stadium, and we're going to be doing a sign-up for that. I believe it is the first Friday in September, uh, which I think might be September 1st, if I have that right. Um, but we have uh, an order form that we need to get on uh, top of. So if anybody's interested in going, uh, and we'll have more information, I think it went in the e-newsletter uh, this week as far as the ticket prices. I think it's $30 per ticket. Uh, it's a little bit of a discount. If you go on StubHub or SeatGeek and other things, prices get pretty high. So it's a decent prize, or price. Uh, for the tickets, uh, and we can go as a group, sit together, and, and have a good time at Dodger Stadium for those who uh, want to join us for that. Um, and last but not least, uh, flowers for today are from Lauren Curtis in memory of his wife, Kay. And thank you, Lauren, uh, for the flowers. And thank you, Kay, as well. Um, if there are no other announcements, please stand as you are able and receive the blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Oh, I 
peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God. Thank mm-hmm. you.